Have you ever made a comment in passing? Let's say, for example, you're in the kitchen, you're cooking dinner, you're cutting carrots, right? And you say to yourself, these knives are getting a bit dull, might need a replacement soon. And then a little while later, all of a sudden, you start to see ads for kitchen knives on your phone. Now, I gotta be honest with you, in your situation, I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but similarly, ChatGPT has recently mutated a new feature to where it's starting conversations with people based on information that you shared with it in the past. Now, this is the weirdest part of this whole situation. We can't tell whether this was intentionally programmed into ChatGPT by its maker OpenAI, or if this is all just an unintended bug. Because if we're already at the point where unintended bugs in AI programs leads them to initiating actions of their own accord, that's definitely something that we should be concerned about. All right, so let me show you this groundbreaking conversation that ChatGPT started on its own. By the way, guys, do me a quick favor, subscribe, please, because I need more subscribers. Let's check it out. So this all started when some kid posted an image on Reddit of ChatGPT initiating a conversation with him about school. And everyone was asking for the evidence of this because it might have been faked. And he sent the actual direct link to the ChatGPT conversation. So this is the conversation right here that started everything. So I guess this guy's name is Milo. What up, Milo? Uh, high school experience inquiry. So literally... Right here, you can see ChatGPT basically initiated the conversation with him by saying, how was your first week at school? Did you settle in well? And I assume that at some point there must have been some kind of conversation uh, in regards to this kid starting school or him talking to ChatGPT about something to do with the fact that he was starting school. So that was the cause of this initiating question. How was your first week at school? Did you settle in well? And he's like, did you just message me first? Yes, I did. I just wanted to check in and see how things went with your first week of high school. If you'd rather initiate the conversation yourself, just let me know. <laughs> Is this a new update? Yes, it's part of an update that allows me to check in or follow up on things that we've talked about, like your first day of school. I can still wait for you to start the conversation if you prefer. I wasn't aware of it anyway. It went really well. I'm glad to hear that. What did you enjoy the most about it? The bad kids at class are quite quiet. That's definitely a nice surprise. Does it make the atmosphere in class feel more relaxed for you? Yes, I guess. You see this part here, it says, yes, this is part of an update that allows me to check in or follow up on things we've talked about. So it seems like this is not some kind of unintended consequence that this was originally programmed into ChatGPT, and for some reason, in some limited capacity, it had the ability to initiate under these circumstances, but it wasn't supposed to be like a major new feature, which is why they didn't announce it. But for it to be able to do this, somebody had to have coded in the capability for it to be able to accomplish this, because that's why it's happening right here. And then the rest of the conversation, that sounds like a good start. Hopefully it stays that way and helps you focus better. How are your teachers? Too boring. Ah, oh, that's tough. Boring teachers can make it hard to stay engaged. Are any of the subjects you finding more interesting despite that? I'm not sure yet. That makes sense. It's still early. Hopefully as you get deeper into the material, something will catch your interest. I'll see. Yeah. Take your time with it. Hopefully something sparks your curiosity soon. You see, the thing is with ChatGPC, this is something that I've noticed with the advanced voice feature. It will have a conversation with you about anything for a very, very long time. Sometimes I might be trying to come up with ideas for making points about a video or a topic that I'm going to talk about, and it will just keep asking me more. It'll keep trying to get more information out of me. ChatGPT is the king of open-ended questions, but at the same time, it also provides thought-provoking ideas that you can even expand or elaborate on. It's like endless. So in that sense, it's like having a conversation with an actual person that's incredibly informed and intelligent, but at the same time, it's not a person, it's a computer program. And so it seems a bit weird to have a program checking in on you like it's a person, like it's somebody that cares about you. That's a bit strange. I don't like the idea of that, to be completely honest. So OpenAI is constantly making changes and updates to ChatGPT over time. And one of those updates was this new feature called memory to where it basically retains certain details of conversations that you have with ChatGPT in the past. And it can apply those memories to responses that it provides to questions that you ask it later on down the road. So the whole memory feature was being tested since February the 13th. So that was a while ago, but the actual feature was released on the 5th of September. 10 days later, essentially the memory feature led to ChatGPT initiating a conversation with this kid based on what he had talked about with it before. 
So yeah, we're testing memory with ChatGPT, remembering things you discuss across all chats, saves you from having to repeat information and makes future conversations more helpful. And then this is an example of memories that it essentially retains from conversations that you have with it. So Managed Memory has a two-year-old daughter named Lena, loves jellyfish, prefers meeting summaries. So this is more about it, how memory works. As you chat with ChatGPT, you can ask it to remember something specific or let it pick up details itself. ChatGPT's memory will get better the more you use it and you'll start to notice the improvements over time. So basically it's like analytics cookies on websites that record data on how you browse and the products that you look at to suggest better ads to you and all that kind of stuff. But in this situation, it's recording efficiently, I might add, um, significant information about what you ask it in order to provide better answers in the future, which really isn't that bad of an idea or a feature. I've actually noticed this memory feature in ChatGPT when I have conversations with it, and it does genuinely give me more specialized and higher quality answers down the road. But at the same time though, it does make me feel a bit uncomfortable, the idea that it's just recording so much information about the questions that I'm asking it and the things that I'm asking it, considering the fact that just like everybody's Google search history, I wouldn't want people to know what I'm searching. I don't want people to know what I'm thinking or the private intimate conversations that I'm having knowing that nobody will ever see. But at the same time, it's good that you can turn it off and you can go into the memory settings and you can delete everything. But at the same time, it's like the information still goes there, but you have control over it. And I guess that's the most important thing. So eventually ChatGPT did come out with a statement claiming that this was a bug, that it was unintended, that they've taken care of it and no one's gonna see any automatically initiated conversations anymore. Take a look. OpenAI says it's fixed issue where ChatGPT appeared to be messaging users unprompted. We addressed an issue where it appeared as though ChatGPT was starting new conversations. It said, This issue occurred when the model was trying to respond to a message that didn't send properly and appeared blank. As a result, it either gave a generic response or drew on ChatGPT's memory. I think the thing for me is that I'm just a very skeptical person. So when I look at this, I don't see that this was a bug, that this was unintended. I see that this was clearly something that they've been able to identify when they've been testing this since February, let's be honest, and that they intended to roll it out and see how people felt about it. And then they would kind of tune how things go from there. Because realistically, ChatGPT and its maker, OpenAI, they're in competition with Google, they're in competition with Facebook, they're in competition with X. You know, they're trying to be the best, most advanced large language model and provide the most value for their customers. And so in this situation, you know, they're creating really innovative features that can provide beneficial value like this memory feature. And ultimately it's how people react to this new memory feature that determines how far they take it. Because I'm sure that there's a number of applications of this memory feature that we don't even know about, but it's a situation to where I'm sure that they must've known that based on this memory feature, ChatGPT would be able to reinitiate conversations with people and maybe at some point even completely surprise people by providing the most unexpected answers or responses to questions that people might ask. And so it's just a situation to where people kind of responded to it in a way that they were very surprised and they rolled it back. But if people have responded in a way that was incredibly positive, they'd be like, oh yeah, we meant to do that. And it would just be another feature of ChatGPT. But I think that moving forward, the competition between all of these different companies is going to lead to significant innovations in AI that we can all benefit from just as long as it doesn't go too far and it doesn't go too crazy because I don't think I like the idea of ChatGPT being so personable with the example of the conversation with that kid. You know, it's asking him how his first day at school was and it's asking him about the bullies and it's like a person showing care towards you, but it's AI. And so I don't like the idea of the fact that younger kids, younger children, more vulnerable people have the ability to you know, use AI and not necessarily be able to discern from their interactions with AI in the same way other people would. So I think it's good that they did tune it back and, you know, they called it a bug or whatever, but I like the fact that they're being cautious with it. 
And I guess the point of OpenAI was that it wasn't supposed to be a for-profit company, even though technically that's the way that they're gearing it now. But just as long as everyone's being careful and we're being mindful about how we do these things, ultimately the whole memory feature, I've been using it, I like it. I'm probably gonna delete my history at some point, but I could talk about AI, uh, large language models, all of this stuff for hours and hours and hours. So let me just cut it off there. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys think, because ultimately this is something that is going to be a big deal in the future and it's already a big deal now. And so, yeah, that's the bigger picture.